The internet, and in particular social media, has brought with it a new method of buying and selling livestock, which is quick, efficient and simple. But in terms of buyer security, is buying livestock online risky? Livestock Biosecurity Network's manager for biosecurity and extension, Rachel Gordon, says it can be, but you can take certain precautions to avoid unwanted diseases, pests or weeds. Yeah, so when you're buying animals, you want to make sure that they are actually healthy. So it's a good idea when you bring them onto your property, hold them into some yards if you can for about 48 hours and that'll give them an opportunity to empty out of any weed seeds that they may be carrying in their gut that you don't want on your property. And then if you have the facilities, hold them in a quarantine paddock for at least a month if possible before mixing them with any other livestock. And in that month, you've got the opportunity to observe them if they uh, start exhibiting any clinical signs of disease that they may not have been showing when they came onto your property. It's an idea echoed by Sarah Britton, a veterinarian and New South Wales DPI Perry Urban Program Coordinator who says DPI is concerned about people being aware of the necessary paperwork and steps they can take for animal health. We've had situations just recently where we've actually had people that have um, bought their animals online. So we had a case in Sydney where they bought some sheep and goats and they bought them from a couple of different people online and noticed that after a period of time quite a few of their animals were lame and they took one of the goats to a vet who diagnosed virulent foot rot in that goat and that was a notifiable disease which then did involve um, government having to go and investigate and have a look at the place but a lot of um, suffering and welfare issues happen even just with things like foot rot and the difficulty in that situation was we weren't able to follow up we weren't able to find out who they bought the animals from and how far wide those people could be selling stock that could spread all over the place so it's certainly an economic and a welfare issue a lot of these things that can occur. LBN and DPI would like to see Facebook and Gumtree make the legal requirements very obvious on their sites so people are aware of what they need to do, with Sarah Britton pointing out that the potential negative impacts of people not knowing their obligations are high, not to mention things like risk associated with stolen livestock being listed for sale online. Yeah, it's like buying a car. You want to do the due diligence and actually know that it, everything works and um, that the health of the animal or the chook or whatever it may be, is uh, good and that they've had all the drenching and worming and vaccinations and things that they need to have had because you wouldn't buy a car without doing that. Rachel Gordon says these simple steps cost very little in time and money but can save you a fortune in both. It's very important to go through these steps whether you're a large landholder or a small landholder because at um, regardless of the number of animals, they, can, they do carry the risk of carrying disease and if you have neighbours with livestock, then if, they, if these animals can have nose-to-nose uh, -nose contact through fences, then there's an opportunity for disease to spread. For more information on the Livestock Biosecurity Network, head to the website www.lbn.org.au.